There is so much to do in Blocks Fruits, but there's also things that have never been done before. So we're gonna test the most insane experiments that not many have tried. Also, with half a million, I'll give away 50,000 Robux, so consider subscribing. It's free and it helps a ton. It's not too often that a new fruit gets released, but this Christmas, the snow fruit has been added. Players have been saying that it's one of the best in the game, so we're gonna review it. The snowflake ability has good range and damage. Tornado is kind of hard to control, but it's decently fast. Whiteout is good if your aim sucks. The Howling Wind is pretty much whiteout, but better. And finally, the Blizzard, the best of them all, with massive range and insane damage. I'd give this fruit a 9. Not the best, but I recommend it for combat. Whenever you finish a raid, you get sent to this box. But I always wondered, is it possible to no clip out of it? No clipping in this game is fairly easy. You buy a flash step at the frozen village, go to a wall, turn your camera, and press R. Now let's see if it works with the raid box. And it did, but I'm below the whole map. It's kind of hard to get back in, so I'm kind of screwed. But hey, at least the experiment worked. I've always wondered what it's like to have multiple fighting styles at once. But reasonably, it's not possible. But I think there's a way to bypass this. You first need to use a fighting style ability that'll last long enough. Then switch to another fighting style. I guess over he could work. It does last for half a minute. Use the ability. Learn the skill. And now I have both fighting styles. Electric plus a dark step overheat. The control fruit is known for moving the biggest things in the game. Like trees, bridges, you name it. But I wonder how high I can lift an object. To run this experiment, we're gonna need something that we can lift and ride. Alright, so we're gonna press Z, press X, and get in the boat. Now we let go, and we're off. So it's been a fat minute, and we're still flying. I'm pretty sure this boat will infinitely fly. What a strong fruit. And there it goes. Yeah, that's a scary fall. The door fruit, I mean, portal fruit, recently got an update, and it's way cooler now. But that's not the main thing here. The portal fruit is one of the buggiest things in the game. So we're gonna see if older glitches still work, despite the new changes. The first glitch is the lava walk glitch. You stand still after teleporting on the lava, negating the fire damage. Door gateway is now replaced with world warp, so we're gonna use that instead. And now I'm fire resistant. The glitch still works. I like how lava is safe and water isn't. The second glitch is the invisible doors glitch. A popular bug where you use the door X move, stand still, and you'll be invisible to your enemies. The X move is replaced with parallel escape. Same thing, different design. Use the X move, stand still. And I'm invisible, let's go. I guess some things never change. A few months ago, there was a door glitch where you can sail on land. That's Block Fruit's logic for ya. By doing all these things shown on screen, you can break the laws of physics. But let's see if it works with World Warp. Buy a boat, use the ability, Boom. sit in the boat, and teleport. And we're stuck in this area. I can't even move the ship right now. Well, now we know this glitch has been fixed. The paw fruit is one of the best when it comes to range. Because I've heard a lot of people say, the heavy paw ability has infinite range and zero limit. So we're gonna see if that's true. First, a cross map shot. I don't know if this will hit. And it actually did. I'm surprised it didn't despawn, like any other projectile would. Now an island to island shot. All these hours of grinding the arsenal shooting challenge has led to this moment. And we actually hit him. I guess Pafru does have infinite range. In every single C, there's a dealer cousin. You basically give him money for a chance of getting a really good fruit or an awful one. Basically showing children how to gamble. But does being in a higher C give you better luck? First, we're gonna roll a fruit in the first C. And we got Kilo, the worst fruit in the game. So this might actually be true. Now we're gonna roll in the third C. And there's the cooldown. And I got the revive fruit, which isn't bad. There's really no way to confirm this experiment. But according to the wiki, they're all the same person with the same odds. We're gonna assume the C doesn't matter, for now. When it comes to damage, Magma Awaken is probably one of the best. But I wonder how much damage it can do. We're gonna fight some NPCs to see how strong Magma is. And just so you know, my block fruit is at max level, so this will be good. We did 40,000 damage in one hit, which is enough to one-shot max health. Now that's a lot of damage. You know what will be funny? An infinite portal loop, like the ones you see in movies. But I wonder if that's possible with the door fruit. Well, thanks to the new update, it probably is. The new quantum leap creates two portals, which kind of work as a wormhole. Anyways, the portal loop should be vertical. So if I look up and press F... Now that's a good portal loop. It's not useful or anything, but I do find it cool. Is it possible to never lose bounty points? Well, of course, you can be a Sigma male and never fight anybody. But what if you're grinding or hunting? If you die to an NPC or a player, you lose bounty points. But if you die by resetting, you won't lose any points. I think this might be the key to infinite bounty points. We're gonna take damage from an NPC. And now we reset. Let's go, we lost zero bounty. And as expected, it should work with players. 
Yup, I keep my bounty. So if you were set before getting killed, you don't lose bounty. Experiment successful. When someone goes for a portal that isn't theirs, they take damage, especially NPCs. So I'm gonna try a clever way of grinding using only portals. Here's the plan. I'm gonna aggro a bunch of NPCs. Yeah, they don't look too happy. Now they're in a straight line, so we quantum leap behind them. Stand in front of a portal, and we're doing no damage. What? Then I realized my blocks for isn't leveled up. Boom. Now we're dealing damage. All you need is the portal fruit and good coordination. How effective is AFK farming? We're gonna see how much money you can make off of this. The trick is to find a spot where you can hit the enemy, but the enemy can't hit you. This spot being a good example. Alright, so it's been about 2 minutes, and we made about 20,000 cash. That's about 600,000 an hour, or 14.4 million daily. So one of my friends messaged me, I bet it's impossible to get 40 levels in 20 minutes on an alt with zero health. This bet seems intriguing, so why not try it out? As soon as the 20 minute boost ends, the challenge is finished. The first step is to always beat up the bandits. Quests are also essential. <laughs> Five levels in one minute. This may seem easy, but it gets exponentially harder. Finally, level 10 in just two minutes. Time for the jungle. This is surprisingly peaceful. Unlike the rest of this challenge, time to beat up monkeys for cash. In Roblox, of course. We're halfway done, but the timer is catching up. Time for the last area. Wasting a whole minute to travel is annoying, but what's even more annoying is that the NPCs are not strong enough to kill me. We need 8 levels in 4 minutes, and dying a lot doesn't help. The final kill. Really? 40 levels in barely under 20 minutes. If you get 10 more levels, that's enough to roll a fruit, which helps farming fruits faster. When it comes to money, things like hunting, AFK farming, and grinding all come into play. But what about chest farming? Well, in the Skylands of the First Sea, you can find a temple that has a lot of treasure inside. By breaking in, you can collect it. But let's see if it's faster than AFK farming by seeing how much we can make in 3 minutes. You gotta wait a long time for a chest to respawn, which is why server hopping is the way. In 3 minutes, we made $20,000. Definitely not as effective as AFK farming. If you think about it, chest farming takes more work, but it's way better for new players. I wanna see if Bloxfruit's physics really makes sense. When two objects collide, physics say there's an impact. The dough fruit has a move called Roller Donut, which makes you roll at a very fast speed. But what if two players use this and collide with one another? So I'm here with my friend to experiment this. Attempt 1. Yeah, that was a bad one. Second attempt, let's not mess this up. Nope. This is the one. And I expected that to happen. Seems like players don't collide, but buildings do. At the very minimum, we learned a valuable lesson. Never trust Blocks Roots physics. We tested a total of 15 experiments, but there's one more I want to test, and that is if we can hit half a million this year. Subscribe to play our part, and if we get 20k likes, I'll try out more experiments. But for now, that's a wrap.